In this problem, we have a beam supported by a pin on the left, a roller on the right. The beam is subjected to a trapezoidal load, and our task is to determine the maximum bending moment. The shape of the trapezoid is chosen such that WA is half of WB. However, it is convenient for me to maintain WA and WB as independent parameters. The purpose of this problem is learn how to deal with more complicated distributed loads. I begin with drawing a free body diagram, which involves the distributed load and the reactions at the pin and at the roller. Now, to write the equilibrium equations, I need to convert the distributed load into concentrated one. And to do so, I split the load into triangular with the magnitude WB minus WA on the right end and the uniform load with the magnitude WA. These loads are associated or statically equivalent to the concentrated forces shown as here. For the triangle, the force is shifted so that it divides the beam and the ratio 2 to 1. The magnitude of the force is equal to the area of the triangle. For the rectangular load, the force is W times L, and it is applied in the middle. Therefore, the original free body diagram for the entire beam is statically equivalent to this one, and I can write down equilibrium equations which will give me the values of the reaction forces. Of course, the horizontal force is equal to zero, and AY and BY have different forms, but also please pay attention that there is symmetry involved in the sense that WA and WB in the expression for AY and BY involve cyclic symmetry. To find the internal force, I need to take the free body diagram for the entire beam and make a cut. The cut is made at the generic location, and so at that location, the value of the distributed load is W of X, and the internal forces, shear force and bending moment, are shown so that they're positive. Here I do not show the axial force or the normal force or the force that produces tension because all horizontal forces are equal to zero, and I denote m of x, but I do not denote v of x, the shear force. Now, if I want to deal with this free body diagram, I recall that the free body diagram for the entire beam involves a trapezoidal load of length L with WA on the left and WB on the right, and we learned how to convert this distributed load into two concentrated forces. Now, if I look at my current free body diagram, it has the same form, except that the length of the beam is x, and the value of w on the right is w of x. Therefore, I can literally copycat this system from this one by replacing L with X and replacing WB with W of X. 
Now, with this in mind, I can write down equilibrium equations for this free body diagram using this free body diagram. And I need only moment equilibrium equations. It involves four terms, one, two, three, and four. The moments I evaluated about the point where I made the cut, I denoted by capital X, so that I obtained the expression for M of X. However, this expression needs to be further examined because it contains an unknown function WX, and we have to find the maximum of M. So let me rewrite it. And first, observe that w of x is a linear function and this linear function is such that at 0 its value is equal to w a at l its value is equal to w b and therefore I can use these two conditions as two equations for finding two unknown parameters alpha and beta and this gives me the value of the function. We can check quickly at x equal to 0. This function gives me w a. At x equal l, it gives me w b minus w a plus w a, which is, of course, w b. This leads to the expression for m of x. Now, in terms of known parameters, W, A, W, B, and L. And finally, I can restrict this function to the values of W, A equal to 2, 2 W naught and W, B equal to 2 W naught. That's the expression. And now, I would like to find the minimum or the maximum of m of x and this is done by calculating the derivative setting this derivative equal to zero which gives us the expression for the location of the maximum moment now the value of x is substituted back into the equation m of x and this gives me the expression that m max is equal to 0.188 w naught times l squared. Finally, to convince myself that this is indeed the maximum, I check the endpoints and I see that at both 0 and l, m is equal to 0, and therefore this expression is indeed the expression for the maximum bending moment.